I thought I would make a video showing the mounting process that I did on a tiny baby bobcat. And when I say tiny, I mean very small. Here in the McKenzie catalog, the smallest thing they sell is 18 inches in length uh, by 13 and a half inch girth. And this little guy was about 13, 14 inches long with a tiny nine inch belly. Oh, we're talking more the size of a fox squirrel. So there wasn't anything available in the catalog and I had to build this form from scratch. Now in this video, I didn't show you the carving of the form, but I'll show you a few pictures. I made it out of a block of foam. I used the carcass as reference. I just looked at the carcass while I was working on it, carved four legs, the body and the head, and assembled. Here is a picture of the form right after I got it assembled and smoothed together. Unfortunately, I had to blur out the corner that had the carcass in the picture because I'm getting really tired of YouTube demonetizing me for a carcass. This is a taxidermy channel. But anyways, here it is held up against a adult-sized bobcat to show the size difference. And there's the little hide. So cute, cute little tail right before I started working on it. Now I'm mixing up the Bondo and I'm gonna do some tiny little Bondo ears. You used to be able to get pink hardener. Now it's very difficult to find. Most of it is blue, but no worries. I find that the blue does not show through the ear at all. It's really a non-issue. So I mix it up with some fiberglass chop for some strength. And you can see I'm shaping that tiny little Bondo ear into place. There's not a lot of ear hair to work with. For as much fuzz as he has on the rest of his body, his ears are not very hairy, so it was a little bit more difficult to shape. I've added some clay in some spots to the form to build up the muscles a little bit. There's not a lot of muscle on a baby this small. I noticed that when I was looking at the carcass. Uh, very, very thin, very little muscle there. So it's natural for him to look a little bit skinny but then again i was looking at a dead carcass and i had to remind myself that the you know the muscles in real life with the blood flowing would be a little more plump so i built those back in but now i'm claying the eyes just like i would pretty much on an adult bobcat maybe a little bit more of a wide-eyed round eye look for the baby here and I was fortunate enough to have one more pair of Tohican blue eyes left in my collection. You could maybe get away with using um, a regular yellowish adult bobcat eye color here, but if we're being really accurate, a baby of this size would still have the bluish gray eyes. So I'm glad I was able to find those for use in this piece because I think it really gives it that juvenile look. Those are his little eyebrows right there I've added in. And now just a little bit of clay for the nose and some clay for the whisker areas. His nose did sustain some damage. That's where some of the road rash is. So I believe I'll be building that up later with epoxy after it's dried. But for now, we'll just use the clay underneath the nose to add the shape. Now I'm putting some hide paste on the mannequin. Not only does this make it way easier to slip the hide on, um, but it also is gonna help adhere the skin down onto that musculature and get all those details. I really don't worry about getting it on the glass eyes. We'll wipe that off later. One thing about babies, their head is a little bit bigger in relation to their neck than adult animals. That's what it seems. So. I had quite a struggle getting his head on to the form here. That's typical, but I was trying not to ruin my clay work. Just keep at it and uh, little by little, <laughs> it'll come together. This is one of those pieces that really didn't look very good right up until the very end. But when you know the process, <laughs> trust the process, so they say, um, you know, you, you power through to the end because he was looking like a little wet rat at this point. And now I'm slipping the back legs on. Funny, in take one, I put the uh, wrong back leg on the wrong side. You'd, you wouldn't believe how easy it is to make that mistake when it's laying down like that. It kind of plays with your eyes. So, yeah, make sure to get the uh, left leg 
skin on the left leg form. <laughs> and now I'm taking the, uh, the bottom leg off because it would be really hard with that ventral cut to get the skin around it otherwise. So just way easier to take that leg off, go ahead and put it in separately. And then I'll just use a screw to attach it right back on. But that was way easier than struggling to try to wrap that skin around there. It really wasn't going to stretch that far. So I'm locking that back into place and going to put a screw in. Now let's work on this face. <laughs> He's not too cute just yet, but I'm kind of setting those ears in place and just like you would any other mount, you're gonna tuck that nose in, tuck the lips. You see those little spots on the face? I'm gonna have to fix those with paint. It seemed easier to lay him on his back like this for tucking the top lips. And I just tucked the lip skin into some slots I had cut in the head of the form. And then same with the eyes, nothing crazy special here, just tucking those little blue eyes. For now, I'm just kind of trying to get them in place and polish them off with some Windex. That helps a lot. I hate working with a dirty eye. Then I laid the little guy in my lap and stitched up the bottom, which wasn't too critical. He's going to have a little scene he goes on. And now we're drying him off. This is the most fun part. And I spent a lot of time drying him to really fluff that baby fuzz up. That was important to get that fuzzy look. Now I really can't do proper finishing work until he's completely dry, but for purposes of this video, I thought I'd show a couple techniques. Right here I've got pan pastel in a nice brownish orange color and I like to apply that to the noses of bobcats. You see how this is giving it some nice color and if it's a little bit too intense then I'll take dark brown in my airbrush and spray over top of that to kind of seal it in. Now this right here that I'm using is tile grout in a tan color. You could also use tan pan pastels but this was working really well to touch up those rough spots around the face that were missing some areas of fur just kind of tones that in with a nice brownish tan color i also used a little bit of this inside the ears to cut down on that shiny tanned look and here he is still in the drying phase but you can see the little scene that i made for him i think that complements him well I hope you enjoyed watching this video of the creation of a custom baby bobcat.